I started practicing about 17 years ago and about five years into practicing <clears throat> I took my teacher training so that was around 2003 and I've been teaching for just over 10 years and I owned a yoga studio from 2006 until 2013 called Sangha Yoga Studio. I came to yoga because I knew that there was kind of something more to learn about myself. Um, I've been physical all my life and I, you know, was really in touch with the potential of my body physically, of what I could do, what I could perform. I was a dancer and um, trained pretty hard as, as a young person, but came out of that phase of my life with quite a bit of injury in my body. I also um, work with scoliosis, so I have a slight curv curvature in my lower back. And I was in pretty consistent discomfort with scoliosis. And I, and I wanted to learn how to how to be strong, but also how I could possibly be calm in my life because um, also had a lot of anxiety, you know? Um, and so when I first started doing yoga, I didn't really understand what was changing, but little by little I saw that my pain was going away both uh, physically and also, you know, internally, emotionally and, and psychologically. So Although I didn't really understand what was happening at that moment, um, some things started to fall away for me that had been persistent patterns in my life for a really long time, such as smoking cigarettes and drinking in excess. Um, I also suffered from an eating disorder from a very young age, and so within time, you know, that fell away, and it became very interesting to me that I didn't have to force anything in order to heal, that most of the process was about uh, enjoyment and undoing or allowing myself to relinquish control um, and undo rather than do more. So I was, I was fascinated uh, around that therapeutic element. Also my body changed completely. I, I, my main practice to do is vinyasa yoga, you know, the fire in me, love the discipline, and the regular practice and um, and I was hooked I was hooked and you know add in some great teachers and a, and a community and um, I just knew I just knew that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life I um, I fell into a community at a new studio back then which was called flow yoga and now they're part of the Y yoga um, community of studios and um, I had two wonderful teachers, Kelly Colleen and Jason Hagemeister, who encouraged me to take my teacher training. And so um, I did, and they also encouraged me to teach my first class very, you know, close to the time they encouraged me to do my teacher training. So I did a six month training with a woman named Carolyn McManus. And the day before I started the program, I taught my first class at their studio. And they mentored me all along that path. So I became a full time yoga teacher within the first kind of six months of starting teaching, which happened really quickly for me. And um, I was very lucky. I was just very lucky to having, I guess, created the opportunity for myself, but also to have the people there to support me to, to make that shift. And um, within a year and a half of starting my teaching, I opened up Sangha Yoga Studio. So it all happened really quickly. I call it um, the douse myself in gas, set myself on fire method. You know, you just get very uh, passionate and very curious and, you know, yoga awakens a lot of energy in you and, and some of us feel that, you know, maybe that is going to be directed um, towards just being a student, but I knew within myself not only did I want to teach yoga, but I also felt uh, like an un entrepreneurial spirit within me and I only f and I felt that by teaching and by opening up a studio that it would only help me to develop my yoga practice which for me to this day my personal practice is is the center of everything that I do so 
So, um, a couple years into opening the studio, maybe oh, maybe about five or six years, uh, my husband and I decided to have a child. And um, I think it was through uh, that process of being pregnant and also having to run a studio and maintain a relationship and maintain my personal practice that I, I really started to understand what, how deep yoga could be for me um, because it had to move away from the physical a little bit and it had to develop on the more internal sort of landscape of things and um, and to just to know that there was a human life growing inside me uh, I mean any mother kind of gains this awareness it's such a gift and, and I started to realize that um, that we are creatures we are animals and we are um, connected to nature and that we're not biggest biggest lesson for me is that we're not fully in control that we're part of something rather than controlling everything and that was that was huge for me to realize because um, using that popular term being a type A personality you know we tend to think and an Aries we tend to think that we are the center of the universe and we're making it all happen and so it allowed me to start this process which has been so important to me as a um, as a yoga teacher and as a teacher trainer and as a mentor, this process of softening and allowing and being part of something rather than constantly pushing uh, my own agenda. You know, and it's been so helpful in my marriage and, you know, in being a mother and my friendships and, you know, my relationship with my own mother. Um, the sense of allowing things to unravel in their own due time and and this acceptance that we come to yoga as we are, right? The asana adapts to us, the practice adapts to us where we are in our lives. It's, it's you know, it's not the other way around. Um, and so that's really helped me as a teacher because I got a, a, a little less uh, dogmatic about things and my mind expand to um, to welcome in all the different personalities that you'll work with in this industry and to meet them where they are in, in their lives and in their practice. As far as my personal practice goes, it deepened my personal practice because when you become a parent, you realize, and when you become a, a studio owner as well, you realize that you have to become more organized. And so I see um, becoming a mother as being uh, an enhancement to my professional life um, because it, it really makes me sit back and plan so that everything I, I need to, like the most important things that you need to get done during the day do and the things that aren't so important can just fall away without me obsessing about them and my personal practice allows me to be a better parent so I put that on top um, and I actually practice with my son. It's not like the perfect single gal practice. It used to be like in a quiet space with beautiful music and, and no disruptions. It's like, uh, it's, a, it's a solid hour and a half, but you know, my son might be doing some of the postures with me. You know, it might be stop and go. There might be a cartoon on, you know, I might have to put my earbuds in and listen to music. Uh, it's different, but it's more sacred. It's more sacred because I um, I respect it so much more than I ever did before. And then I started to look at the fact that very few of those uh, teachers that graduated their 200 program were actually in the industry teaching. And I found that really interesting to me because, um, you know, I know that people take their teacher training for a lot of different reasons, but I started to hear because I was, it was very much in the community that there was frustration building. Um, teachers thinking that there was no place for them in the community to teach, that there was uh, not enough jobs, um, and feeling like they didn't have enough practical knowledge up on their feet actually moving bodies around, teaching people um, to feel confident enough to go out and, and look for a job. And so that's where the TIP program came out of. It came out of, I think, a, a, a need. A need from me to have staff at Sangha Yoga Studio, but also a need from um, all the teachers graduating from their 200-hour 
And I'm really clear. I'm, I'm really clear that, you know, what I do as a mentor um, is I coach teachers. Uh, you know, I'm not their first teacher because I'm taking teachers or teachers are coming to me from all of the different 200 programs in the lower mainland. So some of them are coming in from Surrey and the North Shore and um, it's just once a week a three hour training session. But I'm not, you know, I, I, I steer as far away and I even say in the first session together, like I, I, I'm not your guru, however you define that. I'm not your main teacher. Um, I'm your mentor, which means that I'm your coach, and that means that I'm assisting you uh, and helping you to um, transition to a place that y you're defining. So I'm standing behind you. I'm not standing in front of you telling you what to do. So a lot about the program, and this takes people a little while to get used to, is about me asking them questions. You know, drawing information out of people to find out what is most important to them about this practice. Very similar to what this video is about because this process of, of inquiry or or self-study, we call it in yoga, is, is the thing that is going to um, be the foundation to what we teach other people. So there's a very strong emphasis, emphasis on this word, why, you know, why do we want to teach? Uh, you know, why do we approach our personal practice the way we approach it? Why do we practice the style of yoga that we practice? You know, every, every small element in our patterns, you know, what comes up for us within this process and why do we think what we think um, when that happens? You know, how do we respond to whatever comes up? And, and why is that a persistent sort of pattern for us that hasn't, you know, isn't new. It's, it's something we've done from, you know, very early on in our lives. I feel like yoga, you know, no matter what form it takes, whether doing it as a student on your mat at home in, in public classes or as a teacher, it's a lot about the why and less about the what. You know, we get very caught up in, in the superficial sort of elements I feel of yoga, like even the body, right? This is superficial to the true practice, which is this internal study. We get very caught up in the aesthetic and um, I feel like the community or what's coming, you know, what we see outside us, our relationships, what other teachers are doing, even what the body is doing is a reflection of what we're, what we're thinking. So I always ask teachers to go back to to why and to do the inquiry required to translate the practice to their students. It's a pretty big process, uh, one that can't be done in the 200 hour certification, like we just get taught basic shapes um, and methodology and basic philosophy. Um, but I really want teachers to know that they are their first teacher, that they're not looking to me or to anybody else for the majority of their information. So there's a real strong emphasis on home-based personal practice, which is very new for most, um, most teachers. But I want teachers to know that if they're not willing to stand up for themselves, then they have no right to stand up for anyone else. I feel like we need to become really good listeners. Uh, and I would attach patience to that as well because nothing about this process can be rushed whether it's to get you know your handstand or to get a job teaching at the yoga studio that you want to teach at um, we can only do the work and then we have to be able to step back and allow things to come towards us as well because if we force um, that's the signal we're sending out into the world which is force and desperation and, and strain, right? So I always want to help teachers to create more peace and ease in their lives, right? So to do the work that's required and then to understand that the universe takes a little bit of time to listen to us too, right? It has to listen to what we want once we're clear and then it starts to bring us, you know, what we need. And it's not what we want, it's usually what we need. So we have to become very perceptive of what's coming towards us and understand the right opportunities at the right time. You know, 
understanding that we need to have a personal practice, that we have to get on the yoga mat, uh, even on the days we don't want to, that it's important that once you start to understand the power of asana, that you understand that asana is preparation for pranayama and for meditation, and that the majority of the transformation psychically, understanding ourselves spiritually, will come from stillness. And that's something, a place I think that we're still kind of getting to, we're very much obsessed with asana as I have been for many years. I still, I still am, right? But um, I know that the big shifts for me have come in the last, even the last few years when I've understood that the asana is preparation for sitting. I think that it's really important for yoga teachers to develop themselves interpersonally a lot of this work we do as yoga teachers is, is about connecting with each other. And it, it's great if we can start to understand um, ourselves internally, but also how we conduct ourselves on a regular basis with other people. Because some of us are pretty clueless about that. Um, again, it goes back to listening, right? Again, it goes back to practice. But to get good with being in the world and being with each other. And I just always come back to this one idea, like when I get into a struggle or a kind of a, like a, a tug and pull with somebody, and you know, it can be on a very subtle level. I ask myself, am I here to make friends or am I here to make enemies? And that's been a really important question for me because I start to choose and I have started to choose kindness over rightness, which is like, a huge deal for me because for a really long time in my life I really was focused on status and proving myself and it's not as important to me anymore and I find that because of that so many other beautiful opportunities and relationships have opened up in my life the relationships that you know maybe weren't serving me anymore have fallen away on their own and I'm just a ton happier for making that choice. You know, there isn't as much kind of fighting my way through life. There's a lot more softening, just softening in general. So the, 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 the development of connecting socially with other people, animals, nature, understanding, you know, that sort of uh, feeling of being part of something rather than directing everything. It's been huge. It's been really huge. There's going to be, you know, a substantial amount of bliss and good feeling and, and, and love coming up, but there's also going to be some things that we deem as, as not being as positive. You know, for, for a couple of years I cried on the mat, like unleashing. That's the quickest way, especially as women, that we release stress, right? So. I would feel a building of energy and then the tears would come and I wasn't particularly sad that day, but there was, uh, this was the easiest way for me to release tension and people do that all the time. So you might notice this kind of expunging process or cleansing process that needs to happen emotionally at the beginning and then at different times it will become intense for you, right? Maybe it'll just be purely physical practice for you for a long time and you'll watch your body heal and strengthen and then from that, there's a spiritual development. I don't know. But all I know is that this yoga thing is, is great. And it's worth sticking to it and creating a habit over a long period of time, thinking about it as a lifetime process rather than, you know, a one-night stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>